Uh, what's good, everybody? Um, welcome to another edition of Let's Get This Straight, Mr. J Hill. Special guest in the building, Jess Hilarious. What's up? Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for finally oh, sitting down and talking to me. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> no, I appreciate you for real. Hey, you're a superstar. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, both, we was off camera and I was asking, like, are you even a millionaire yet? It was a joke, but mm -hmm. you went into detail that I didn't even. Yeah, yeah. I look so. I if before I knew what millionaire meant. Mm -hmm. I was going around saying I was just because I had made my million, my first million, um, like four months ago, and then two months later, I made my second one. So I was like, oh, I am a millionaire, I am a millionaire. And so I talked, so I have a lot of celebrity friends that was like, nah, don't mean you're a millionaire. Do you have both of those millions <laughs> in your bank account? I was like, no, there's like, oh, well, I don't care if it's 999,000, You are not a millionaire until you're able to look at two million. Four million, three million, whatever, in your bank account. But I guess you could say you're worth a million. Oh yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Damn. I'm a hundred thousand in, not one hundred. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a lot hundreds, of hundred thousand. Yeah, hundreds, yeah. Of thousands. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy because like I just, I still remember. I tell this story often. Like I still remember when you was running around with nine thousand followers, bro. Oh my god, yes. And this was one of my most inspiring things because mm -hmm. it was like. You was on to come up, and you like, look, I just want to hit ten thousand. Mm -hmm. I just want to hit ten thousand followers, and you was literally yes. just like, yo, follow me. I follow you back. Like, <laughs> like to see you now I from there. Do you ever like go back in your mind and all, think about those times? All the time. That's what keeps me really humble. I do a lot of, you know, a lot of traveling. I meet a lot of people, and that's what really keeps me humble. You know, knowing that I'm, that I was not just here two years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't at the status that I am now. Like. A year and a half ago, actually, you know, I just hit TV. I did Wild and Out two years ago, and then fast forward. Between that time, I did Def Comedy Jam Russell, with Russell Simmons, and then I did um, Hip Hop Squares. You know, a lot of the, of the reality show, like the game shows, and then I did the, the sitcom for Fox mm -hmm. Rel. So that 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 was that did wonders for me too. My career, like that, actually, that was like my crossover. For real? Yep, my sitcom. I, I actually Fox. like so. I was me and my girl is watching Rel, right? Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's on Hulu, mm -hmm. and we were trying to figure out why it got canceled. Because we like it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like it was funny. I ain't gonna lie. Yo, we we didn't. The only thing I didn't like about it, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, is so Rel plays so many people, but at the same time, yeah. it's funny. Like, yeah, it's funny. So it yeah. is what it is. It was a lot of work for him too, but you know what? He he still did it, and I really, we really, there was no no reason that came down the pipeline as to why it was canceled but it had been canceled long before they even announced it like um Damn. they it was like got canceled like four months before they even put it out there before it even hit headlines like so we was just trying to figure out if we were going to um um shop it to other networks or whatever you know well not me personally but you know it's real show so he was trying to figure that out and then one of the, his uh writers and producers died you know well, so yeah I seen after that. that he just you know, he just was checked out, but he just got a special, his HBO special. So shout out to Lil Rel Harry, that's my man. So that, in that situation, do when he moved forward, do he like try to reach back and say, "Yo, Jess, I got another situation. Can you hop on with me?" Like, did he choose you, or um, was well, that? Well, for real, he did choose me. Um, and then it, it wasn't the fact that it was just that uh, he liked my my Instagram content enough, and it was the fact that I had the best audition. And he he says this on camera like she had the best audition she had the best uh self tape because you know when you when you don't go and uh, do an in-person audition they'll ask you for like a self tape you have to prop a camera up and then read all your lines like that and then act like someone is talking back to you or you get somebody else to read but everybody i know don't read right so mm. i just did my shit by myself and that probably then, was hard yeah, talking to yourself i, I know <laughs> but I, I i tapped into that actors mode and um I wasn't even the first pick for Ralph. When I sent in my, my self tape, they didn't even pick me. They picked somebody else whose last name was Moore as well, and she was from Baltimore. Oh, wow. Crazy? Wait, what? Yeah, ain't that crazy? You know, I'm Jessica Moore, I forgot her first name, but her last name was Moore, and she's from Baltimore as well. And um, they went to table read, and then they didn't like how she acted or how she was reading, and then they said, cast Jess. Wow, Bring so even Jess Hilarious mm -hmm. is still auditioning for things. Absolutely, yeah. Because I feel like a lot of times people get this 
a little bit of fame and they, they mm -hmm. get a little name behind them, they feel like, well, I don't have to audition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes that, that happens. Like, for instance, um, Tiffany Haddish, she, has, she doesn't have to audition anymore now, you know. But at one point in time, she was. She was having to, There are A-list actors who still have to um, audition for roles, you know what I'm saying? Just because there are so many great ones and they want to be able to pick who they, who they really, really want, who's best for the role. They want to see everybody, how everybody, um, you know, how everybody does, you know, does in, in character with it, so... Yeah. How does that work though? So is it like, all right, I want the gig, so I reach out, or yeah, I'm interested in you, so I reach out to you type mm -hmm. thing. Okay, so in LA or in Hollywood or whatever, you you have agents, and some people who don't have agents, they they're independent or whatever, but they don't really get the same like all of the first grabs on work because mm -hmm. agents have connects with like casting directors. Um, top directors, uh, other agencies, executive producers and stuff like that, writers. So it's like, I don't want to say it, but it's, it's all about who you know and who you're close to. And right. I'm under one of the best agencies. So I, I get a lot of things on first hand. So to get a great agent or a pretty decent agent that can get you into doors, you already have to have like a name. You have name. to stand out. Yeah, you have to stand out. It's real hard. Politics. It, yeah, it just ain't about Sheesh. making videos and stuff. How they got me, my agency, they saw when I did Def Comedy Jam, and they, they picked me up for stand-up, but then when I was like, y'all want to act, they got me real just like that. So, so. When, um, how long did it take you to move? Because you moved to L.A. at one point, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How long did it take you to move to L.A. once you started getting popular? How many followers you had, I guess? That's the easier way okay, to look at so it. so before I became popping, popping, like L.A. popping, um, I only had about... A million. I only like, had I about know. a million. Yeah, that's yeah, but like that's what I know, but still, I don't know. It's it takes crazy. a lot to get a million. I know, shit. I know, right? Take a lot to get 10,000. You're right. It's, it's, <laughs> I know, it took a lot, yes, but like one million. And then I went out there, yeah. and then it just kind of like skyrocketed. What made you there. make the move, like just jump and move? Um, the, the TV show, bro. Okay. Mm -hmm. So far as, all right, let's talk about, because I feel like being from Baltimore, we have a lot of unique things that come with it. Mm -hmm. Just like mm -hmm. the way we speak, <laughs> uh, things we speak uh, on. What was the hardest part about being somewhere else? And even now, consist uh -huh. consistently meeting people from other places, being from Baltimore, uh -huh. what stood out the most about you? What was the hardest coming from somewhere else? And what was uh -huh. the, probably like the things that people love the most? Okay, so you know everywhere a Baltimorean goes, they want you to say dude, You too. too. <laughs> like, you say hot dogs, we don't say dog, we say dog. Doug. They like, yo, they... It's a lot. Orange? Yeah, yeah <laughs> they yeah, because we say orange. Like, you know, they... So, I often get asked to say certain things, or, like, they like for me to roast. Like, they just like to hear my accent, how, how gutter, you know, Baltimore is. Like, we just say, we talk real hard. Right. We talk lazy. Like, for instance, what you doing? Like down, like people be like, what? Like when I got to LA and I was like, what you doing? Like they be like, what? what? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, what are you doing? We don't talk like that. We lazy and we talk real hard. So everybody just like to hear me talk. That's the only thing. So I got some voiceovers coming up too for like animated okay. series and stuff. Okay, so like did that, was that attracting people? Was that making people shy away from you? Well, I'm trying to figure out what was. It was a little, honestly, it was a little bit of both because, um, doing certain interviews you know what i'm saying for a while it took took me a long time to like like i don't have a problem like pronunciating words like like but if i'm just relaxed and i'm chilling then i i be baltimore all day right until i realized a lot of people wasn't understanding what the fuck i was talking about so i was like oh shit. I, I, say that again? Yeah, Come yeah, again? I gotta bring the pa just out because i went to high school right because i went to high school in pennsylvania so you know, that was a predominantly white high school, so I had to really, really clean it up after a while in um in interviews and then and then some places where I go they'd be like, just be yourself. I want the raw Baltimore hard accent, just be yourself, do what you do. Are you sure you want this money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'd be looking like, Okay, we'll see where it go, dummy. So let's talk about the um let's talk about you the the coming about Jess hilarious, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like not a lot, but a few of those were through unfortunate circumstances as far as like going viral, right? Mm -hmm. Some people would think, man, it's a part of the come up. You're mm -hmm. just doing that for publicity. Mm -hmm. Like at, at what point was it like, damn, this shit, I'm just fucking up, but then it's helping yeah. a part of my process. Like how did that go? Like the first one was, I think the picture. 
Mm-hmm. Was that mm-hmm. the first one? Well, my son. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a. Yep. That was actually, honestly, all of my controversy really helps me. Like, for instance, um, um, all but one situation. The first one was my son, because that's how Nick Cannon actually saw who I was. Because uh, the comedian Corey Holcomb, when he saw that picture, he went in on me. He right. was like, he this went is in. Why? Yeah, like he called my son gay and all that. And I'm like, nigga. And was he, he wasn't even naked, I don't think. I feel like no, I seen a... I was naked. Right, I, said, I seen a short some. And, like. Jordan, yeah. <laughs> and, and so I went on. I went in on a um, comedian. Um, what's the nigga name again? I forget about his ass. I was just talking about him. Uh, what's his name? But he ain't important, so... I you talking about Corey Hogan? Corey Hogan, oh, yeah, yeah, my yeah. dad. Yeah. So I went on him. I went in on him for like three days straight. I was so mad that he said that shit about my son. And then, well, at that time, he was on Wild and Out. So then Nick Cannon had um had reached out in the DM like, "Yo, I like the way you handle yourself. You know, you seem tough. Like you, you, you fit. You quick on your feet. Like you don't only go at girls. You go at guys too. Mm-hmm. Like, do you want to audition to be on Wild and Out? And I was like, sure. But I wasn't even auditioning to be on Wild and Out to be on there. I was. Going up there hoping I would see Corey Hoke. Yo, you already know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what I would have did. I probably would have. I don't know. That's what the I boss of Nigga, but yeah, I went up there and Nick came and set me up. I say that to this day because I asked Nick, I was like, all right, so Corey gonna be up there, right? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went up there and I did my audition. And he was like, you got the, you got, all right, so you got the part. You good. So I was like, all right, where Corey? He's like, mm mm, he not on the show no more. I was like, all right, so you already know why I'm up here. Right. You got up, you got me up here, but but that was one of the best things that ever could have happened because that was like a, a milestone for me. That was a perfect segue into TV for mm-hmm. me. So um, shout out to Nick Cannon for actually being the first one to actually really put me on TV. How was that experience? Because you see a lot of uh, comedians that's coming up, get on, mm-hmm. wilding out, and mm-hmm. then that's how they jumpstart their yeah. career. How was how was that experience for you? It was great. It was great. I did. Um, I did three seasons, and right before I was about to go into my fourth season, that's when I got picked up for Rel, and I couldn't do Rel and Wild and Out while okay. I was being shot in New York, and then Rel was being shot in LA. So I just had to sit down with Nick. I was like, Nick, I, I want to pursue acting. I want to take a break from Wild and Out or whatever. He was like, Look, go ahead, pursue your dreams. You're gonna be big. How I, is Nick? I see it. How is he? Nick is very humble. Nick is cool as hell. He's like a big brother to everybody. He's like, he takes care of people. He believes. And taking care of people. That's a good man. I know so. it's probably hard trying to, like, because it's so many other up and coming comedians, mm-hmm. rappers, mm-hmm. whatever there is that got talent that mm-hmm. has a million followers. And as yeah. you know, a million is not even a lot no. in that industry. Yeah. And I like, because I know one person who um, he has like a million, maybe 2.5 mm-hmm. at this point. And mm-hmm. like, he was trying to get on Wilding Out. And he mm-hmm. was like, it's just hard. Yeah, harder than is. you think. So it really is. It's just, I can imagine, man. I mm-hmm. used to always clown Nick Cannon. Because I always yeah. thought he was just. A clown, then, yeah, yeah, Corny. But when I got I older, I low key call him one of the ghosts. Like yeah, I ain't gonna lie, yeah, like to create Nick, to to create Wild and Out mm-hmm. is huge. Like Yo, so, I give him all like, respect. Season two hundred and forty. All respect. Like, like, yeah. I, whatever I say, mm-hmm. you you prove me wrong. So yeah. it's like shout out to Nick. Okay. But um, so like that was one. The next one, I feel like the next one wasn't the last, the latest controversy. Oh no no no! Okay, so all right, so it was the picture of my son. Then it was I'm always was it the hair? Um, that that helped me a lot. I made yo, I made like but all this two two hundred thousand dollars off of t shirts. This is three crazy. Off of that bald head ponytail. This is uh-huh. crazy. So I was like, Mm-mm. that helped go toward my million. Wow. So, okay, that's what's up. so that what was that that was that the second major controversy? That was second. Then the third one was I got in trouble for some gay shit. Um, they, this, this, oh. this nigga had jumped out there and told me, he was like, he called me a tranny and I called him a faggy and, and they just went crazy with it. But listen, that's my thing. The LGBTQ, it's, yeah, the, it's yeah, so many other it's words. Like, yeah, you know so they went crazy about that. But the thing was for me, I'm like, yo, y'all got to realize I grew up in Baltimore. Like we used to say that shit back and forth to each Regular, other. Like me like, and my homegirls used to say this. We're like, bitch, you're a faggy or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Before everybody decided that they wanted to be gay, you know, it was gay really wasn't as big as it is now mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying back then growing up like we used to make fun of all types of shit not even only gay people it was just just things that we were you able can't to do say certain things then. as gay like it's period you can't do it now and I realize that now not even only online I'm talking about even in real everyday life you can't even be how you are like the world is so, so sensitive, sensitive. it's yeah. so sensitive yeah so I'm just like okay the new trend is offended so, facts right. so like Speak because these controversies, it seems like all of these controversies 
helped you, mm-hmm. honestly. In even, some way, in some way. And it's like, on the outside, it, it, like I said, some people will be like, man, it's all for publicity. Mm-hmm. But how are you feeling in the moment? Because we all know, like, you, you're a woman. Like, and mm-hmm. that don't mean just because you're a woman, you're emotional. But yeah. that's just how I speak. Excuse me. Yeah, it's you, okay. And you are passionate. Yeah, So because you're passionate, when things like this happen, we see your emotions behind mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how are you thinking right in that moment? Um, I'm never really regretful about anything except for the one situation I had where you know the whole religion thing mm-hmm. um, we, I was a, I was in the airport and um, I seen this guy he was wrapped in a turban he was like all black and everything and then he had three other guys with him well it was two it was three of them all together two other guys with him and he was tur- they were turban wrapped as well and then um, one of my friends that spoke to one of them just you know clowning being, being funny but wasn't making fun they were just like how you doing and they didn't say anything. They just kept going. So they started praying, and the, like you know, like how they get down and mm-hmm. pray. And I became a little scared, you know. But I was. It's different. Mm-hmm. I understand. You know, being from Baltimore, then being, just everybody was around for nine eleven. Everybody knows what's going on. Then, then how terrorism is perceived on TV, what they show you is, that's like the face of terrorism, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't know that, that it was these group of the people. Head raps, the head yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that they were different branches. I didn't know that it was different mm-hmm. types of religions and different communities of people that wear them that don't necessarily even consider themselves Muslim, Muslim. or mm-hmm. or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I really felt big blowback behind that, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and it crippled me as a comedian as well, like in my own opinion, because I'm already hard on myself. And then I was like, yo, shit, this this is bad. Out of every controversial situation I've been in, that was the worst one. And that is the one that I do regret. I don't regret how I felt because then you can't change how you feel, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But you can't help how you feel. But I regret putting it online so because it hurt a lot of people. Didn't, but at the end, like, in the video, they, they weren't on a plane anymore. Like No, so, okay, so they we, we got on a plane and then they evacuated the plane. I didn't see them when we got back on the plane, but my driver at the time was like, no, they got back on the plane. Okay, all right. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, because it came into effect that people was like, oh, you got them people put off the plane. I'm like, I ain't getting nobody put off of nowhere. You right. know? That's so my was, question. Like, so yeah, where were they? But they, they were still on the power. I was, don't even want the power to be able to get somebody put off the plane. I don't want nobody looking at me crazy like that. Right. You know, but I didn't see them. I didn't see them. I was in first class, as I always am. <laughs> sorry, sorry, no. But yeah, I just had to throw that out there. But yeah, I was in first class, so when I sit down, I go to sleep, you know. And then I was, I, I drink wine all the time. Call me what you want. I drink wine all the time. So when I sat down, I be sleep. I be knocked out. That was a five-hour plane ride to L.A. So of course I go to sleep. I didn't see everybody who bought it, but I thought that they were off the plane. So that's what I said. I'm like, mm, well, I don't see them on the plane anymore, and everybody's getting mad at me. But obviously, somebody else felt the same way whole time. They were still on the plane. So it was just something that escalated and it was blown out of proportion. And I do realize it was still my fault. So I had to had to do a lot of, you know, self-healing with that shit. That and shit really fucked me up. In your defense, and I was this is actually one of the questions I want to speak on because mm-hmm. in Baltimore, I don't want to say ignorant because I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, yeah. but there's a lot of things that we aren't exposed to because yeah. we are, a, mm-hmm. a lot of times we are only in our city. Baltimore's mm-hmm. a big city. Mm-hmm. And... A lot of people don't even leave Baltimore. Yeah. And shit. Some when I went to college, I didn't even I never even had Jamaican food, Caribbean food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> so it's like either. and then yeah, a lot of my friends even then to that time we was confusing Jamaicans with Africans and it's yeah. on a totally different and side of the world. So like they right. like fight you over because they, they're like, not no, it's, it's totally two different yeah. right. So and yeah, it's what definitely are, different. What are some of the things some other things that you might have learned just because all this comes with traveling the world. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some of the other things that you learned just going other places but Baltimore? Like, some things you might have learned on the road, some things you might have learned about. Man, just, you know, different, well, look, definitely different accents. I, I've learned that nobody feel like they have an accent. Right. Nobody. <laughs> What's the funniest like, one? Uh, the funniest one, oh, my God. Because people want to say Baltimore, but I think. Deep Georgia, like, deep, deep Georgia. Not even just Atlanta. Give me I'm a Georgia Decatur, like, like, D.C., DC, uh, DC Young Fly, Decatur, Georgia. Like, Give me a uh, Georgia accent. Oh my, <laughs> oh my God. Yo, I just did one on Justin Damasio. All right, so look, it's this girl named Akbar V, right? And she on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. And I love to hear this girl talk. I can't even understand what she be saying, but when she get mad, it's like she cool, but when you bring that country country out her, she was fussing with somebody. She was like, <laughs> she was like, 
we got these motherfuckers kids looking up for us, and we only we we gonna do that. Let's do it right. We gonna do this right, right? We got these motherfuckers kids. Like they they cut off the end of every everything. <laughs> like yo, say kid, who what, what? kids? Oh this my god, they got these They look the what? Yo, the, I love when they get mad. They just you don't. That's like a whole other language. Mm. But yeah, that's what I learned. I've also learned that people eat differently. People raise their kids diff- differently. More people in the world need to whip their kids' asses. Um, just all type, all types of stuff. Traveling, I've noticed that they do shit different a lot. So, do you think? I wanted to ask this because I just was curious. Like when you got famous, right, mm-hmm. and you became the just hilarious. Mm-hmm. Do you think Baltimore accepted that, or they shunned away from it? And and like, how did you think you got more love from your city mm-hmm. or less? Um, for the most part more love from from the, I, even before I made it as just as I was still you know a little popular or whatever um but I, I got honestly I got a lot of love uh, the hate that I got was more so from other comedians in the city which mm-hmm. was crazy how I started off um so cool and he he got me started um another Baltimore comedian he got me started or whatever he was having this this um Cool Sundays. Except, yeah, it was Cool Sundays at. Uh, and one then of you had some at Tilted Pig. Yeah, yup. Yeah, I was with G. I was up there with rest G. Rest in peace. A lot. We was, yes, rest in peace, Sam. Um, and then Desi Alexander. Those those three. Uh, also, Cleon, a comedian. Cleon actually uh, featured me in a lot of things that he did as well, like his um, his comedy shows, and um, we we did skits and like little shows and stuff together. So um, those four comedians actually really really. Um, Helped me a lot, you know what I'm saying? I can say that. Um, but man, like the women and then some other dudes, man, like it was even a time when me and Cleon had fell out. You know, it was it was just a lot going on. Like, I don't wanna say none of them wanted to see me make it, but it was a lot of underlying hate. Like, damn, I've been doing it long, way longer than Shorty, how she, right. da, 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 you know? One so. thing that kind of hurt my feelings, honestly, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not even gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you was on the Breakfast Club. Yeah. And he was, it was asking about like it come up Mm-hmm. But you ain't mentioned like what I seen, like the nine thousand. Like it was mm-hmm. like you know I was doing Instagram videos, and then next thing you know, I think you said Martin hit you. Yeah, yeah. And Martin then he was like, next thing you know, first, yep. Nick Cannon hit me. I'm like, wait, what you mean? Like she was working way harder than that. I and I was, I was like, I, I, I kind of wanted you to like mm-hmm. say, yeah, you know, Aunt or mm-hmm. G. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I don't know if it was time based or they cut something. Oh yeah, I don't, definitely. It's yeah, time so based. it's like the Breakfast Club is like, cause it's syndicated, so they do a live and then they got to chop. They only got like thirty minutes to chop it up or whatever. So we are, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely timed. But yeah, you know, I um, I just I don't know. Like I and then I, I wasn't good with interviews for a long time. It was like a lot of stuff that I left out. Like maybe mm-hmm. asking about relationships and people be. And then I was waiting for the for the the prep. Most of the time, people be like. All right, so what can we can't do? What can they don't do that? Well, hell yeah, no. they don't do that. And 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 then I want to just be like, all right, so I don't want to. I mean, because I'm just a liar, so I put anything out there and they mm-hmm. need to know. So it really didn't matter to me. But they was asking. They wanted to more so focus on what I had coming up and then the relationship shit at that time because okay. it was it was that's what was going on. It, a lot of also love and hip hop. They wanted to get. They want to get. <laughs> yeah, they want to get that. Yeah, they want to. I understand, to but but I mean, so how was it? Um, I really don't have any questions about like the relationship, but I did want to know mm-hmm. how was it dating somebody mm-hmm. as popular like uh, Country Wayne. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I feel like Chris, um, he was like a regular relationship. Like yeah, y'all was, was boy. You know what I'm saying? Like were, yeah. not saying he's regular, but I just feel like that was somebody you you you, you no, met. He's, regular. he's definitely regular. This <laughs> day. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. What I'm saying, like, no, no, yo, I'm just, I feel like he was with you before. He was. Then y'all had y'all was y'all was going mm-hmm. for a little run, and then mm-hmm. y'all mm-hmm. broke up. It is what it is. Yeah. I just feel no, like it, it was wasn't. Just, yeah, but I do. What I've always wanted people to know that it wasn't because a lot of people will look and assume, oh, she got rich and she got popping and she just left that nigga where he was at. It's not that. It's not that I've developed. I had developed like so many like countless opportunities for Chris to soar or whatever and you know it's just it just didn't happen like that he wasn't as ambitious he wasn't as you know and and he, he's cool you know we're we're cordial if I see him it's hello and, and whatever but you know it took a while to get to that point you know and then mm-hmm. as a female when you're in love you like to lie for people like you lie for your mate like if you want you know 
If you really, really love that person, you don't ever want to embarrass that person. You don't mm -hmm. ever want to. So it was like not everybody, because some girls be waiting. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> shit. But it was I was in, not in denial about a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm like, yo, I got too much going on to be sitting here just getting used and shit. Just keep, you know. So it, it, I went my separate way. I was single for like five months, and then here come country is. How the hell? What like? How did that even happen? Oh my god! <laughs> Listen, I had a show in West Palm. West Palm, uh, Florida, and he showed up at the at the fucking comedy show, and I play this game. Sometimes I may play games with my fans at the end of my shows or whatever, because I'm I'm, I'm a, such a relatable comic, and we play this game or whatever. So I, I pick people up off the crowd. So my driver at the time, she knew who he was, and she she liked him because you know a lot of people do know Country Wayne. So. He she puts him up on the stage. I turn around and there he is right there. He's and he's like, I told you I was gonna come get you. <laughs> I was like, oh, cause he was liking me for like two years. I met him on two the years. Ele yes, I met him on the elevator when I was on, when I was doing Wild and Out in New York, and he told me he knew that day that he met me in 2016, I believe, that I was gonna be his girlfriend. I was gonna be his wife. That we were we were gonna. Just hit it off and everything, but you know, I'm a Baltimore bitch. I'm like, nigga, I don't fucking know you. Get the fuck out of here, boy. I don't understand what you're saying. So I did all that, but he loved that shit. He loves it. Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, I love the way you talk. I don't care what you say. You cuss me out all day. I don't give a da 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 whatever. So we hit it off, and then we was hanging out for a long time, for not a long time, but like a month, and then he just made it official and then the, the rumors came you know about you know he's still happily married or whatever he was married to you know his ex-wife but they were um officially separated okay and he had lied to me and told me that they were divorced so when i found out that they weren't the they weren't actually like officially divorced yet um and that it was going to take four more weeks mm. i still was just like mm. Okay, I, I mean, I still gave him a chance. You know what I'm saying? Like he approved of me. He was like, I lied to you. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want to lose you. Like I told you, it took me two years to chase you down and get you, and and I just didn't want to lose you. I'm, I'm separated, but and the divorce has not been, you know, it, papers has not been signed yet on our, with our lawyers. Everybody's still negotiating for alimony and all this stuff. So I was like, okay, all right, well, whatever. And then we spent all of our time together. We he had got me a house and. Whatever, so that shit. it was a lot. That's, was a that's lot. dope. But I had fun after going from one relationship where I felt like I was like the 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 breadwinner, the one who had to provide everything. Then going to one where you don't everything have to is provided be, right. for me, mm -hmm. I'm spoiled. It's about time a nigga spoiled me. It, it felt good, but we we realized we weren't really good together. I think I realized it first. <laughs> Cause Wayne is still telling you like I'm still I'm still in love with her I'm still and I'll be like mm, mm, hey I Thank love you, you too but, you know, <laughs> yeah no. my you my dog <laughs> yeah yeah but I, I was it was so like for, love it all as far and, as like just look wise I guess or publicity mm -hmm. wise was that different too because I know usually it's just you now mm -hmm. is two of you is like yeah everywhere you do go not like sharing my spotlight with no name I ain't oh, gonna sheesh. lie to you I don't oh know. wow I'm sharing my spotlight I ain't gonna lie that's why I don't want to date a celebrity I really don't I because never. you're selfish like that what's your son no I'm an Aquarius I'm not even selfish Jay yo I just really don't I just I don't know I don't know I don't know because I feel like is you shit can get very competitive me and Wayne have argued so many times about who makes the most money we thought about going on tour together but he won't let me headline Cause he he won a headline, but I'm like, you're not funnier than me. You don't even curse, like you, <laughs> you don't, don't even. You know what I'm saying? You don't drink. You know. Why don't y'all just write you know? a script for both of y'all co-headline shit? That's what we had going on. That's what we had going on. It may still happen. It may not. I don't know. The nigga's crazy. Mm. Period. <laughs> <laughs> so look, man. Uh, how do we um just for Baltimore? Because mm -hmm. I feel like you make a lot of content I and. Did. Uh, there's a lot of aspiring comedians, just, um, host, mm -hmm. content creators. Mm -hmm. What What is your advice to those young up and coming entrepreneurs to as far as creating content? Stay relatable, no matter what. Like for instance, I'm one Baltimore comedian. I'm Vonty. Yo, that nigga's funny. Like he started. He's doing the same thing that I. Not saying he's biting off of what I did. Let me just say that because people are misconstrued. They're gonna take that. Uh. No, but. I look at him and I'm like, damn, that's how I started. I used to ride around 
Baltimore and do videos in my car about the shit that I see in Baltimore, just everyday hood shit, shit that, that, that women can relate to, that young girls, how you be with your friends and how bitches be at the club and how bitches be with their nigga and shit like that. Just don't relate, just keep it relatable, stand out, don't, if, cause everybody got the same type of videos, but if you, if you just, Sorry, if you just go talk to a girl to see the different responses that you can get or whatever, just because you want somebody to laugh, but you want them to laugh and then be like, I did the same shit, bitch, right. that's how we be. That's better than just getting a laugh. That's better than just saying, oh, you're funny. It's like, you're funny. You don't know what she be talking about. She know, you know what I'm saying? So just stay relatable. Everyday life, shit that happens in everyday life, find a way to make fun of it without making fun of the person you know right. what i'm saying um it's so many questions like i just yeah. like i said i ain't studied because it's like i really had so many questions to talk to you mm -hmm. about because even with like just you know how some people say you blackballed and oh yeah like mm -hmm. do you feel i've been canceled and all of that no i don't feel black I, well, I you just feel like you're still yeah. getting the same opportunities absolutely like i you know i actually went into hiding after that um that muslim shit. i was like yo I'm good. I'm good. I'm gonna just chill out. I was scared mm -hmm. and shit, you know, because Muslims are everywhere, and Muslims they get they get crazy. Yeah, they get wild and shit. They they just like bloods and crips. And but I don't think even worse. They weren't Muslim. I don't think if they I'm weren't. Not they were Sikhs. And yeah, that's the thing. Everybody thought I just. Everybody Nigga, just we, was like, we just speaking like even now, like we just speaking here, like even said right. That they were, I never, I never even gave them a name. If anything, I said I felt like they were terrorists. I never mm -hmm. said Muslim anything. So people just had the media just kind of got in and ran with it. Um, no, I haven't been blackballed from anything. Um, it was one show that I had at a college, and then they canceled on me. Um, the head of the the board, she was a Muslim. Oh. And she caught offense. So, you know, she just was like, she was very respectful. She said, I just don't want her to perform. She didn't even say forever. She was just like, I don't want her on this show. That was a show I did with Marlon Wayans. Uh, I was supposed to do with Marlon Wayans. Um, they kicked me off of it. But that was only, only one show got uh, canceled. But then I was like, I don't want to do auditions for like a good three months. Let that shit die down, mm -hmm. you know. But I didn't even have to take a whole three months. Because in this day and time, Something is here, and then gone it's over. Here today, you know what I'm It'll blow over so fast. Even, even death, like it's so yeah, messed it's up crazy. how we've become so desensitized. Somebody can die, and then you forget about them. You forget later. about them. Yep, three days later, it's not, it's nothing anymore. So yeah, it didn't take that long, that long for it to blow over. But I still but wanted to get. It's crazy because like we say that, but I don't know if you followed the whole Monique situation. I did uh, recently, like for like the last like, year or so. It's been probably longer than that now. Yeah, actually, like, like two or three years. Yeah, cause cause some people would say it's been since Precious for real. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but she kind of like let it die for a minute, then she just came back out. Yeah, so know? it's like yeah. seeing her being one of the great comedians that she is. Mm -hmm. It's like part of me, honestly, just me, because some people would be like, "Nah, she deserves mm -hmm. it." But I feel kind of bad because like she is funny, yeah. and even on the stage when still people suck a dick, it was like she's a comedian. Yes, yes. Do you think that is, 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 a, is, a, is a lot because she's a woman and she's black? Like, how do you take mm -hmm. on the industry being a woman and a black woman? Because you see more of mm -hmm. it than we have. And I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. aspiring to get there and uh, so many people, but, but we don't really know behind yeah. these doors. Well, that shit happens all the time. I just want to keep it all, all 100. Like, that shit happens to black women all the time. And, um, in the industry the only thing is Monique actually had balls to say something about it you mm -hmm. know a lot of times people be scared of being blackballed she what she didn't give a fuck she just like no I'm exposed niggas this is this is what really happens and this is how it goes down and and you know she's just getting back from that shit but she sacrificed a lot right. to be able to 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 expose people she did so we know what to look for I've never encountered anything like that and I God knows hope I don't but hopefully she I, was she helped yeah. She scared the people that would give yeah. that to you, what so they wouldn't do it again. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. like, now nah, mm -hmm. I understand because it's just crazy because seeing her to go through that is like, damn, man, mm -hmm. I wish that had happened to happen to her. I know. I, I seen an interview with Oprah and Oprah co host when she was working in Baltimore, if I'm not okay. mistaken. Mm -hmm. He was getting paid more than her, and mm -hmm. he was like, they sh she thought they should be paid the same mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. but. She went to our boss and she was like, "Well, do you have a kid? Are you yeah. this age? Yeah. Why should he? Why should? Why should you be making it the same?" Mm -hmm. And that's when she left. She ain't say nothing. Yep. And it's like, but you see how where Oprah ended yeah. up not saying anything, not saying and you nothing, see where right? Monique mm -hmm. ended up had the same stuff. It is like, and then and then it's the way she say stuff. It's her her delivery. You know that she bought them on, and she you know she. It's just crazy, man. It, I wish like that ain't have to happen though. I know. I wish it didn't have to either. I I'm with 
Oprah's way and then I'm with Monique's way. I'm not really, you know, I'm kind of torn because you know I, it's the principle in both. Right. It's the principle. So what's what's up, man? Like what's what's you going to give us? What you going to work on next? Like, cause you said you got yeah. something coming. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You ain't said. So just with the mess will be a network production. Wow. Um, yes, yes, yes. Can we get some cool ants in that? That's easy. Uh, yeah, like, come on, know. man. Like, I mean, listen, you we trying know. to put the city I'm on. Try- like, come on. Like, you know, I'm a, I, listen, I'm trying to put this. Not me. Maybe not me. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. the guy that asks the questions. Yeah, but shit, no, like. No, that's fine. No, no, no. I got you. Then I'm also uh, working on um, uh, producing uh, um, a sitcom for Desi, too. Desi is a good writer. Amazing writer. Wow. So he's actually doing that. We going to pitch that to Netflix and we going to get shit popping with that. You know, uh-huh. we got, got our connections and shit. And then. One thing that me and Desi always talked about was putting people on from the city. You know, please, that's I took what I'm asking. Please, and I couldn't take everybody. You know what I'm saying? But I took him with me. Um, that's like, nah, that's my man. That's my my other half when it comes to the stand up shit. Like my brother, Desi is like everything. He always there and shit. You know, so we always talked about. What got y'all that close? Hmm? What got y'all that close? Call Compared to like it. everybody that you work with in um, the city, like was it some situ- like certain situation that just happened with y'all too? Doing comedy, I actually he's always been one of my. I remember the first time I seen him was that uh, one of Aunt Cool Aunt um, on his open mic night. And I'm like, yo, funny as shit. Because at first, me and Cool Aunt was as close as me and Desi are now. But you know, then Aunt moved to Bowie and then I moved. Yeah. To, okay. Know, so that's what. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now me and Aunt never had a falling out. We just kind of like fell off, but. Still all up there, but I seen Desi perform at one of Cool Ant's open mics, and I was like, yo, you funny. I always thought he was the funniest uh, dude, stand-up comedian, and a uh, male stand-up comedian in Baltimore. Like, I, I always thought, I still think that to this day. Like, he funny as shit. He knows how to relate to these people. Desi can do comedy for any age group, mm. from kids all the way up to senior citizens. Like, his ass is funny. He's loaded with material, and it's all fucking relatable. So that's why he was the one that I chose to take with me. It makes sense. No, mm-hmm. it makes sense. I was always just wondering, like, mm-hmm. because I definitely see you take him with you, and I was like, I yeah. wonder what happened or mm-hmm. what made him so cool. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we became brother and sister, yo. We just tight, man. So that's but, just what it is. A lot of money, like, like, I know, yo. I know, I know. Like, yo, you is like, I'm. I really do ha- be happy when I see you. Like, damn, like mm-hmm. this is crazy. My last. What made you unfollow everybody? Was that mm-hmm. a reason or just curious? Okay, so I I don't like to look at any uh, anybody else's content. I really don't. I I don't. Okay. I just okay. So since I was accused of stealing jokes like years ago, somebody. All right, so one of the um one of the comedians here uh, said I had stole her joke, and then she had started telling niggas I be stealing jokes from Dave oh. Chappelle and <laughs> Kevin Hart, and I'm like, yo. You know how many people watch? Almost the whole world watches Dave Chappelle. Somebody else would have caught that as well if I was out here stealing jokes from them niggas. Like, but me and her had a, a similar joke, and it was about you know sex, you know. And it's it's like it's kind of hard to say somebody stole your joke if it's not word for word mm-hmm. because great minds think alike, women think alike, and a lot of females. And comedy feel like they have to talk about sex to be funny. Now I don't talk about sex. And I say I don't think I. Yeah. Maybe I miss a couple sex jokes, but I feel like well, me saying you, I don't think you talk no, about sex I, a lot. I don't. I don't. I got like four or five sex jokes. That's it. Just just because it's so cliche. You you every time you see a female comic, you just know this bitch gonna be try to be nasty. <laughs> I don't do that, you know. But one of my particular jokes was you know similar to hers, and so you know she was cool with me until I started you know. Going place, then I open up for Martin. I did the joke there. She goes, she comes there. She tells everybody, oh, I stole it. She got that shit from me. And I was supposed to help her write. She was crying to me, asking me, can I help her write? I hope it ain't who I joke. think it is. It, it is. But I'm like, yo, I was never crying to you, but yeah, I did ask you to help me write jokes. I was a baby in this shit. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know everything about comedy and all of that. So no, of course, I asked you to help me. I, like I asked, um, Ex Desi to help me write a long time ago. I asked Tink, King Tink, the DC comic. I asked, I asked a couple, I asked uh, G Songs to help me write some shit. Like, I've asked almost everybody who I thought were cool mm-hmm. to help me write. You know what I'm saying? And the you used to. Who- you used to bring your notepad to the comic show, right? and like what? that wasn't funny. Fuck it. Yeah, like, I right. fuck with that. I'm like I'm not scared to do that type of stuff, and I'm not scared to admit that I needed help early on. You know, I was a baby in it, and then, but you know, people, 
they they want to see you doing good, but never better than them. And that's just that we was cool until I started doing a little bit better than her. So it was just like fuck it. Well, that's it, man. I guess mm -hmm. we can. Yeah, I appreciate you for coming for real. Um, thank you. You could have been anywhere else. I'm gonna let you go. Okay. Uh, thank you. Let's get this straight, Mr. J Hill. Just hilarious. Dumb. You already know, to man. To this day. <laughs>